extension means the change in length and it is denoted by delta l where delta refers to change for force kg weight is not the unit the unit for force is newton so we have to write this quantity with the standard unit that is newton compressibility can be calculated by taking the reciprocal of bulk modulus it is denoted by k k is equal to 1 by b since we are finding the elongation which means the change in length the unit for length is meter and we have to be very careful in writing the units hello everyone welcome to session 5 of chapter 9 mechanical properties of solids this is swati from department of physics vidyashram pre university college the temple of excellence mysuru the last four sessions we have discussed about the theory part of mechanical properties of solids and today we are going to start with the numerical part in our session 5 so let's begin with the first one we have a problem a steel wire of length 4.7 meter and cross sectional area 3 into 10 power minus 5 meter square stretches by the same amount as a copper wire of length 3.5 meter and cross sectional area 4 into 10 power minus 5 meter square under a given load what is the ratio of young's modulus of steel to that of copper we all know what is young's modulus what is the formula to find out the young's modulus in the question we have two wires made up of steel and copper the length of steel wire and the copper wire is given area of cross section of steel wire and the copper wire is also given we have to find the ratio of young's modulus of steel to that of copper so let us first write the given data before solving the problem so length of steel wire i have considered it as l subscript s l stands for length and s stands for steel so length of steel wire is 4.7 meter area of cross section of steel wire that is denoted by a s where a stands for area s stands for steel area of cross section of steel is 3 into 10 power minus 5 meter square and length of copper wire i have taken it as lc where l is for length and c is a copper so length of copper is 3.5 meter area of cross section of copper is 4 into 10 power minus 5 meter square so before solving any numerical it is always important to write the given data now they have mentioned in the question steel wire stretches by the same amount as that of copper which means the extension of steel wire is equal to the extension of copper wire extension means the change in length and it is denoted by delta l where delta refers to change so the change in length of both steel wire and the copper wire are same and they are equal to delta l so let us now write the formula for young's modulus young's modulus is given by y which is equal to fl divided by a into delta l we have discussed about this in detail in our previous sessions where y stands for young's modulus and f is force l is length a is area of cross section delta l is change in length so let us write the same formula for steel so i have taken y s young's modulus of steel y refers to young's modulus s stands for steel which is equal to f l s divided by a s into delta l where l s stands for length of steel wire and a s is area of cross section of steel wire now similarly for copper let us write y c it is nothing but young's modulus of copper wire which is equal to f into l c is nothing but the length of copper wire ac is the area of cross section of copper wire and delta l is change in length so let us now find out the ratio of young's modulus of steel to that of copper ratio means we have to take ys divided by yc because they have asked us to find the ratio of young's modulus of steel to that of copper so now this formula substitute ys with this formula so we will get f ls divided by as into delta l divided by in the place of young's modulus of copper substitute this one so we'll get f into lc divided by ac delta l now we have f ls divided by as delta l whole divided by f lc divided by ac delta l let us now cancel the common terms f and f will get cancel delta l and delta l gets cancel and we remain with ls divided by as and whole divided by lc divided by ac now taking this to the numerator 
we will get ls ac so it becomes ls into ac divided by as into lc so that is what we have mentioned here ls ac divided by lc as where we know ls is nothing but the length of steel ac is nothing but area of cross section of copper wire lc is nothing but length of copper wire AS is area of cross section of steel wire. We have already written the given data where we know all the values of these quantities. So let us now substitute all the values. Length of steel wire is 4.7 meter. Area of cross section of copper is 4 into 10 power minus 5. And length of copper wire is 3.5 meter. Area of cross section of steel wire is 3 into 10 power minus 5. So let us now cancel this 10 power minus 5 and 10 power minus 5. And we remain with 4.7 into 4 which will give us 18.8. 3.5 into 3 which will give us 10.5. Taking the ratio you will get 1.7904 divided by 1 and that is the ratio of Young's modulus of steel to that of copper. So the next problem, 2 wires of area of cross section 5 into 10 power minus 6 meter square. One is made up of steel and the other is made up of brass. They are loaded as shown in the figure. The unloaded length of steel wire is 1.5 meter. And that of brass is 1 meter. Find the elongation in each wire. Young's modulus for steel is 2 into 10 power 11 newton per meter square. And that of brass is 0 0.91 into 10 power 11 newton per meter square. Here we have two wires. One is made up of steel, the other one is brass. They are loaded as shown in the figure. You can observe the figure properly. And the unloaded length of steel and brass is also given. We have to find the elongation in each wire. The Young's modulus is different for different materials. So Young's modulus of steel is given and the brass is given. So let us now write the data. Total load on the steel wire. Observe the diagram properly. This is the steel wire, the first one. So what is the total load? So the total load on the steel wire is 4 kg plus 6 kg. So total 4 plus 6 that is 10 kg weight but the force that is suspended to the steel wire is 10 kg weight but for force kg weight is not the unit the unit for force is newton so we have to write this quantity with the standard unit that is newton to convert this kg weight into newton you have to multiply it with by 9.8 so 10 into 9.8 give you 98 Newton. So what is the length of steel wire given? 1.5 meter. The unloaded length of steel wire is 1.5 meter and we have to find the elongation that is change in length of steel. Young's modulus of steel is given 2 into 10 power 11 Newton per meter square. Area of cross section is given 5 into 10 power minus 6 meter square that is same for both the wires. Now we know the formula for Young's modulus that is y is equal to fl divided by a into delta L. Let us now write this for steel. So I have taken it as Ys, Young's modulus of steel which is equal to Fs Ls divided by A into delta S. Since the area of cross section is same for both the materials, I have just considered it as A. Fs stands for force and Ls length of steel wire, delta Ls is the elongation. So hence the elongation for steel is we have to find the elongation. So let us modify this formula just by rearranging the terms. We just have to find delta Ls. So that will go to the LHS and we remain with Fs Ls divided by A into Ys. This just rearrange this terms to find the elongation. Delta Ls is equal to Fs Ls divided by A into Ys. We know all the values of these quantities. So let us now substitute to get the answer. F is nothing but 98 Newton and length of steel wire is 1.5 meter. Area of cross section 5 into 10 power minus 6 meter square. Young's modulus of steel is 2 into 10 power 11. And multiply 9.8 into 1.5, you will get 147. 5 into 2, you will get 10. Here you have 10 power minus 6 and 10 power 11. So it is of the form A power M into a power n which is equal to a power m plus n which you have studied in the laws of exponents. So I have 10 power minus 6 into 10 power 11 which is equal to 10 power minus 6 plus 11 which is nothing but 10 power 5. So I have 10 into 10 power 5. So 147 divided by 10 you will get 14.7 into 
when this goes to numerator it will become 10 power minus 5 or we can write it as 1.47 into 10 power minus 4 meter. Since we are finding the elongation which means the change in length the unit for length is meter and we have to be very careful in writing the units. So let us now write about brass wire. Load on the brass wire. You can observe in the diagram. So the load on the brass wire is 6 kg. So the load on brass wire is 6 kg weight. We have to represent this in Newton. So we have to multiply 6 with 9.8 and we will get 15.8 Newton. So now length of brass wire is 1 meter. Change in length of brass wire we have to find out. Then Young's modulus of brass is 0 0.91 into 10 power 11 Newton per meter square. So area of cross section is same for both the wires that is 5 into 10 power minus 6 meter square. So let us now write the formula for Young's modulus of brass that is FB LB divided by A into delta LB. We have to find the elongation so delta LB becomes this will go here and this gets multiplied. So we will get FB LB divided by A into Young's modulus of brass. Let us now substitute the values. Force that is exerted on the brass wire is 58.8 into the length of brass wire is 1. Area of cross section is 5 to 10 power minus 6. And YB is the Young's modulus that is 0 0.91 into 10 to the power 11. So now multiply this 58.8 into 1. You will get 58.8. 5 into 0 0.91 you will get 4.55. And again we have 10 power minus 6. 10 power 11. So we will solve this 10 power minus 6 into 10 power 11 which is equal to 10 power minus 6 plus 11. So I will get 10 power 5. So I have 10 power 5 here. Divide 58.8 from 4.55 you will get 12.9 and this goes to numerator and hence the power 10 power minus 5 meter. So this is the elongation produced in steel as well as in brass. So let us now move on to the next one. Find the force required to stretch a wire of area of cross section 2 into 10 power minus 4 meter square so that its length becomes 1.5 times the original length. Young's modulus is given by 3.6 into 10 power 11 Newton per meter square. Here we have to find the force that is required to stretch a wire. So the Young's modulus of the wire is given by 3.6 into 10 power 11 Newton per meter square. The area of cross section is given 2 into 10 power minus 4 meter square. So that its length becomes 1.5 times the original length which means the final length becomes 1.5 times the actual length. So let us now write the given data before solving the problem. Area of cross section 2 into 10 power minus 4 meter square. Young's modulus 3.6 into 10 power 11 Newton per meter square. Let L be the original length. Why we have taken L because the original length of the wire is not mentioned in the question. So let us take it as L. So let L be the original length. Then the final length is 1.5 times the original length. It is given in the question. So we have to find the change in length. Change in length is nothing but delta L. That is calculated by taking the difference between final length and initial length. So final length is 1.5L and the original length is L. So 1.5L minus 1L which will give you 0.5L that is change in length. We have to find the force required to stretch a wire. So we have delta L, we have L. The value of L is not given but we have considered the original length as L and we have area of cross section. We also have a Young's modulus. So the formula which fits for all these data is the Young's modulus formula. So Young's modulus is given by Y equals FL divided by A into delta L. We have to find the force. Let us rearrange this formula to get the value of force. So F is equal to multiply these two. So Y into A into delta L divided by L. So let us now substitute all the values. The Young's modulus is 3.6 into 10 power 11. A area of cross section is 2 into 10 power minus 4 and delta L is calculated that is 0.5 L and whole divided by we have one more L in the denominator. So this L and L will get cancelled. We remain with 3.6 into 10 power 11 into 2 into 10 power minus 4 into 0.5. Multiply all these you will get 3.6. We have the powers 10 power 11 into 10 power minus 4. So which is nothing but 10 power 11 minus 4 is nothing but 
10 power 7. So the answer is 3.6 into 10 power 7 Newton. Since we are calculating force, the SI unit of force is Newton. So the next problem, the average depth of Indian Ocean is about 3000 meter. Calculate the fractional compression that is delta V by V of water at the bottom of the ocean given that the bulk modulus of water is 2.2 into 10 power 9 Newton per meter square. Here they have given the value of G is 10 meter per second square. This is not given then we have to consider G as 9.8 meter per second square but they have given the value as 10 meter per second square. So let us now take this value only to solve the problem. The pressure exerted by 3000 meter column of water on the bottom layer is calculated by the formula F by A that is force acts per unit area which is nothing but the pressure. So F by A is equal to P and P is nothing but rho G H. We are deriving this formula in our next upcoming chapters. Rho stands for density. We are talking about the density of water. So density of water is given by 1000 and G value is given in the question only. It is 10 meter per second square. So substitute G as 10 and H is the height of the liquid column is given that is 3000. So the value of P will be 3 into 10 power 7 Newton per meter square. Since it is a pressure, the unit is Newton per meter square. The fractional compression delta V by V we have to find out. So the formula for bulk modulus is stress divided by strain. We are talking about the hydraulic stress and hydraulic strain. So it is minus stress divided by strain is nothing but delta V by V just substituting this in the formula. So we have to find delta V by V. So let us now modify this. Take this to the LHS and this will come again the, to the denominator. Delta V by V is equal to minus stress divided by B which is equal to only in the formula we are representing minus sign because it says that as the pressure increases volume decreases. But we are not considering that negative sign in the final answer. We are just taking the magnitude. So stress is calculated that is 3 into 10 power 7 divided by the bulk modulus is given 2.2 into 10 power 9. So the answer is 3 divided by 2.2 give you 1.36 and we have 10 power 7 in the numerator 10 power 9 in the denominator. So let us now solve this we will get 10 power 7 into when this goes to numerator it becomes 10 power minus 9. So this is 10 power minus 2. So the answer is delta V by V is equal to 1.36 into 10 power minus 2. Since delta V by V deal with the same quantities and it is nothing but a strain which has no unit and I have not represented the answer with any units. The final answer is 1.36 into 10 power minus 2. So let us move on to the next question. When a rubber ball is taken to a depth of 100 meter in a sea, its volume decreases by 0.1% due to hydraulic stress. If the density of seawater is 1000 kg per meter cube, calculate the bulk modulus and compressibility of rubber. So they have given the volume will reduce to 0.1% of the original volume. So original volume is considered as V. The change in volume will be 0.1% of the original volume. So that is 0.1 V divided by 100 because they have given as 0.1% of the original volume. We have taken it as 0.1 of original volume divided by 100 and it will be 10 power minus 3 of original volume. And P is nothing but the formula to find the pressure that is rho G H where rho stands for density of water and it is given as 1000 kg per meter cube. Substitute the same. G value is not given in the question but the acceleration due to gravity value is 9.8 meter per second square. So take it as 9.8 and the height of the column is given that is 100. So 9.8 into we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. So you can write it as 10 raised to 5 Newton per meter square. Why the unit Newton per meter square? Because we are talking about pressure. We have to calculate bulk modulus and compressibility of rubber. So the formula of bulk modulus is P divided by delta V by V because we know bulk modulus is equal to hydraulic stress to hydraulic strain or volume stress to volume strain. This F by A is nothing but P divided by delta V by V. Let us now substitute all the values. The pressure value is calculated that is 9.8 into 10 power 5. Delta V by V is 
10 power minus 3 V divided by V we have. So we can cancel these two V's and now write 9.8 into 10 power 5 we have in the numerator, 10 power minus 3 in the denominator. So this goes to numerator and it becomes 9.8 into 10 power 5 into 10 power plus 3. So we will get 9.8 into 10 power 5 plus 3 that is 10 power 8. So the answer is 9.8 into 10 power 8 Newton per meter square. They have even asked us to find the compressibility. So let us calculate compressibility. Compressibility can be calculated by taking the reciprocal of bulk modulus. It is denoted by k. k is equal to 1 by b. So it is 1 divided by 9.8 into 10 power 8. We will get 0 0.102. This goes to numerator. It becomes 10 power minus 8. So these are the few examples of the numerical problems from the chapter mechanical properties of solids. In the next chapter, we will discuss about a new chapter. Until then, all of you take care. Thank you.